All right, guys. So we. All right, sorry about that, guys. So we talked about uh, neutrals and druids, and now we are moving on to hunter. So let's see what ten cards the hunter got this set. So start with the most expensive, which is the Abominable Bowman, right? Seven for a six seven death rattle summon a random friendly beast that died this game. I think this is pretty cool. But it's a little higher on the curve. Like and I think when you know one thing when evaluating cards is you have to be aware of what they exist like in the meta right now and how decks either existing decks get better because of it or new archetypes can be formed. Right? That's important. So right now when you think of Hunter, you think of like this kind of undeveloped secret Hunter deck that, you know, it's playable, can get Legend, but I don't know. And you think about the mid-range Hunter, which has got a bunch of one and two drops, uh, you know, a bunch of three drops actually, right? And then you curve out into turn six high main, right? And that's where the curve ends, six, right? So there have been a lot of other Hunter archetypes that like Face Hunter is not really existing anymore and Control Hunter, which never existed. Uh, those are kind of other archetypes that people want to develop and, and do things with. Right? You know, maybe not with just be synergy, right? So this is where Abominable Bowman comes in, right? So it's seven. So we're already pushing the curve up one. Uh, and it has a death, row, death rattle, summon a random friendly beast that died this game. Seven for a six, seven. The stats look pretty good. Com comparable to a Boulder Fist Ogre, even though slightly more expensive. And if you control, you monitor the death rattles that you play in your deck, you may bring something back. And obviously the biggest one would be Savannah High Main, right? So you play a Savannah on six, it trades out, then you play this on seven, you get a this plus a six six five. And even though that's the magical Christmas land of the perfect curve for this deck, I actually think that that works pretty well. So now Hunter can take a more of a mid-range death rattle approach, right? And I think that might play pretty well. And I, I think this card is actually going to see a lot of play. I'm going to give it 4 out of 5 for Abominable Bowman. So I'm going to add that to my list of better than average cards. Next is the Hunter Death Knight. Deathstalker Rexar. Battle Cry deal 2 damage to all enemy minions. You get 5 armor. And it costs 6, which would make it the cheapest Death Knight in the game. Um, and its hero power actually is the, uh, you, you get to build a zombie or something. <laughs> like, you get to build, like, a, uh, uh, and a minion, right? And it has, like, one ability from a minion that costs three or less, a random beast, and one ability from, uh, one ability from a minion that costs four or more, I believe. And because I don't really know what that hero power does exactly or do i know all the permutations and iterations of what it could be um i can't fairly rate this card so i'm going to give it a three out of five simply because i don't know and uh, you know i i really feel that the set didn't give enough to make um control hunter a real thing but i think it did give the set enough cards to make uh, a death rattle hunter maybe maybe be a real thing right so Three out of five for the hero power simply because I just don't know any better. Corpse Widow. Five for a four, six. Your death rattle cards cost two less, and this is a beast. Um, I like this card because the obvious synergies with Savannah High Main. Now, the only question is you cannot really play this simply because you got Abominable Bowman, and you do you want to bring this back or do you want to bring back the Savannah High Main? But at the end of the day, that's not a, that big of a deal. Because the Corpse Widow still discounts your Death Rattles. And 4-6 is not bad on turn 5. Those stats are good. I think the card is pretty good. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. I, you know, my favorite card is Burgly Bully. It's 5 for 4-6. The effect is great. This is similar. Um, and I can real, have a real compounded effect on your, uh, on your deck. And I think a Death Rattle Hunter might be a real thing now this set. So I'm going to give it 4 out of 5. And corpse Widow, 4 out of 5. I need to write that down. That might be something that I try this, you know, that this cor Death Rattle Hunter or maybe Secret Hunter may be one of the first decks I build. So next, Exploding Bloatbat. 4 for a 
two one beast death rattle deal two damage to all enemy minions. That seems pretty all right. I actually like this a lot, even though the stats are subpar, uh, and it's another death rattle that you don't exactly want to pull from a vulnerable man. You really wouldn't care. You really wouldn't care because losing this would still mean two extra damage to everything on your opponent's board. Um, and especially in a competitive part of the board, I think that's good. I like it. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Professor Putricide, after you play a secret, put a random hunter secret into the battlefield. 4-4, four, 5-4. Four, four. So stat-wise, this is okay. It's not bad. 5 attack, it's great. 4 health, not great, but it's okay. Still trades with most 4 and 5 drops, right? Now, let's think about the effect. In standard, there are 5 hunters traps, right? What do we got? We got Snake Trap, we got Venom Strike Trap now. Uh, we have Exploding Trap, we have Freezing Trap, we have Snipe. And then we got the Cat Trick. So there's, there, there may actually even be six spells. Now imagine. Like the magical tr Christmas land is Huntress on three, it stays alive. And then you play this on four, and you go wild with some secrets. Now let's say we do get the magical Christmas land. And let's say there are six secrets. I don't know if there's six secrets, but let's say there are. And let's say you do play all of them. Actually, no, you wouldn't even play all of them. Let's say, okay, let's say Magical Christmas Land, you play three secrets. And let's say Magical Christmas Land, when you play these, when you play secrets, the random secrets you get from Professor Future Sight aren't the secrets that you already played, right? So that would mean, I mean, that would be it would be pretty crazy to get two or three secrets up on a turn uh, through Professor Future Side. I guess it's pretty good. I don't know. I'm on the fence. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's interesting, though. I would definitely want to break this card in. This is this seems like a super cool card. I'll give it... I'll give it four out of five. You know what? I've always... Secrets have always been a crazy fucking thing. Do you remember when... Mysterious Challenger was a card, and it did crazy shit. Like, this doesn't exactly cheat um, all of those things in, but I think it'll still be very interesting. Four out of five for Professor Putricide. Next, Bear Shark, three, four, four, three. Beast can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. I think that's weak. Um, man, honestly, I really like four health more than I like four attack. Uh, and the fact that this can't be targeted by spells or hero powers is interesting. It's interesting, but it doesn't seem... I mean, the art is cool, man. Bear Shark, that's cool. But this card is just lacking a bit, so I'm going to go ahead and just give it a... I'll give it a 2 out of 5 stars. Stitch Tracker, 3 for a 2, 2, Battle Cry, discover a copy of a minion in your deck. I think... Even if you play a high volume of creatures, which you will likely do, I think this is a strong card. And I think this will work better in Secret Hunter because you're likely to play more secrets, right? So this can help you search for the Huntress or the Professor Future side. I think this card's going to see a lot more play, play than people think, even though, even though the body is weaker, right? So, ah, gosh, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to compare this to Arcan Arcanologist, because it is not Arcanologist. You don't get a secret, um, and you're discovering you're not just dragging something out of your deck, which is awesome. Um, I think this is pretty good. I will give it, you know, I'm going to be generous. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 for Stitch Tracker. Wow, you know, the more I look at the Hunter cards, the better I think Hunter has become. On paper, right? Toxic Arrow, deal 2 damage to a minion if it survives, give it Poisonous, 2 mana. I think it's weak. Um, I'd rather have something like uh, Mark of, what's it called? Hunter's Mark. So Toxic Arrow, 1 out of 5, seems weak. Venom Strike, 2, secret. When one of your minions is attacked, summon a 2-3 Poisonous Cobra. I actually think this is underrated. I'm going to give it 3 out of 5 because I actually think this will see quite a bit of play. Um, and it really changes the way combat and dealing with secrets will play out. And I like it. I think it's pretty good. I would like to see that in a secret list. And lastly, Play Dead. One for a spell. Trigger a friendly minion's death rattle. 
we've had this before, and Blizzard seems to be wanting to shove Death Rattle down our throats, but I think this works, okay? Um, Fame Death is a crazy card, um, and at two mana, I guess it was too much, but I don't know. I I got a feeling that this card is a lot better than it make. You know, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's no body. Nah, you know, this card is good. I'm going to go out on a limb. Three out of five for Play Dead. It's going to see play, especially in Death Rattle lists. Like, regardless if it's good or not, people are going to play that card. Um, Hunter is looking pretty okay. I like the cards. I like them trying to develop a new archetype. But the question really becomes here, is there enough cards to support a, this, like, Corpse Widow, you know? Is there enough cards to support A-Bomb? Maybe they're trying to push a wild Death Rattle list, right? I don't know. We'll see, but that's Hunter. Man. What do you think about Hunter? What do you think? Do you think this, what, what is going to be a prominent archetype for Hunter? Will Hunter even exist in this meta, you know? What do you think? Let me know.